one of my personal missions in life is to make sure that none of our clients ever end up on the news for security issues because these are nine, maybe 99 times out of 100. These are preventable issues. And there's three things that every company should think about when they're watching this video. The first are backups. Now, the interesting thing about backups is backups, they never fail. It's only restores that fail. So if you have a disaster recovery policy and you're not actually testing it, you're not making sure that it's actually working, you're sort of playing roulette with your revenue. And, you know, I'm not a gambler personally. I know some gamblers, but that's not something I would really want to bet the house on. So the first step is to make sure that your backups are actually recoverable. The second is to make sure that your backups are offsite, that they are encrypted, and that they are read only. They're very simple things to do. And as long as you're constantly doing, as long as you've built it into whatever process you're using, you're setting yourself up for success. The third is to make sure that you're using the architectural and operational principle of least privilege. You might have a CTO that wants to be able to do everything, wants to be able to go into this system, go into that VM, to be able to tweak anything uh, he or she wants. Well, that's great until the CTO's account gets compromised. And then you're letting an attacker essentially wreak havoc on the entire system just for the sake of expediency. Being able to have different verticals that all play very specific parts in your software development and operational life cycle allows you to mitigate as much risk as reasonable. Now, it's not something that you need to take to an extreme as saying, oh, you know, like this person can only do this if they get a proper approval from that. It's like, no, it, it needs to be a balance. Security is all about making sure that you're able to still achieve your business goals as well as manage the risk between the two. And if I were a business owner, would I really want to put my company's revenue, my company's future, the livelihood of my employees to chance by having three things that I could be taking care of right now? I hope you know what the answer is, because I certainly do. We work in a lot of different fields, a lot of different industries. We're in healthcare, we're in finance, we're in banking, we're in agriculture, we're in entertainment, we're in uh, the energy industry. Pretty much every major industry we've worked in it some way, shape, or form. And one of the things that sets us apart is the fact that we're able to take lessons learned from one sector and apply them to others. Now, because of that, we get to see, and we have a lot of opportunity to provide constructive criticism about the way that certain things are going on in certain businesses. And when people, when organizations come to Keyhole Software, it's because they have a very acute need. It's because they need something done and they trust us to do it right. So when we give advice, when we give constructive criticism, we have to be very diplomatic about it because, you know, if someone has a mistake in their business, you know, it's, it's their livelihood, it's their baby. They don't want to be told that, you know, the, there's a wart over here, or there's, you know, a missing limb over there. So you have to do it very politely. You have to do it with a smile on your face and you ultimately have to have their best interest at heart. We have intentionally chosen not to have any conflicts of interest in terms of which software, which packages, which tooling we would recommend because we want to make sure that whatever advice we're providing, be it security, be it operational, be it architectural, that it is truly in the best interests of our client. And it's how we ourselves would want to be treated.